Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here for the second time recording this part of the review. So I got through the port section of the Carl, and turns out I forgot to use my NVIDIA broadcast mic. That's a software that filters out my PC screaming in the background during the port section of these reviews. So, yeah, here we are again. But anyway, we do have the Carl the 14th Johan in port to review for you guys today. I'm assuming the Swedes do something like the Koreans where the family name comes first and then the individual name. Because... Yeah, that's the only way I can see that making sense. If not, someone from Sweden, feel free to correct me down below. But anyway, the Carl the 14th ship that kind of snuck up on me. I remember reading the dev blog where she was announced and then um, she just kind of came out. So that's kind of cool when, you know, a ship that you were excited for, you forget about it. And then suddenly, oh, look, she's been released. So what this is, is a, I believe the, the wargaming lore behind the Carl is that it's an unfinished uh, World War I battleship, battlecruiser hull that Germany sold to Sweden. And then Sweden finished using German guns. So, interesting ship here indeed. And we're going to be taking a look at her and her characteristics today and of course giving you guys my two cents on the ship and whether or not i think it's worth picking up if you do want to pick her up she's available right now in the armory for nineteen thousand doubloons which is roughly again the cost of most tier 9 premium ships so she's right on the spot for now for her price at least of course big shout out to the channel's patreons these guys make this ship review and all ship reviews on this channel possible, as I am not a CC nor affiliated with or supported by Wargaming in any way, shape, or form. And these generous patrons make this review and all ship reviews possible here on this channel. If you wish to support the channel, the best way to do so is, of course, Patreon. And, of course, just watching the videos, streams, and the shorts and any of the channel's content. But let's go ahead and take a look at the Carl for a second time today. So, speaking of being a premium ship, she of course does come with the bonus package, which is 10% buff to the credit income and 100% buff to the various XPs. And of course, she does have the built-in tier 9 premium economy, which is the best economy in game. So, TLDR, she's going to be making you some cashola. And yes, I have played this ship already quite a bit. Um... There's a reason for that. <laughs> but anyway, so also in the same section, this is her permanent camo. And thankfully, it is a camo. Again, like uh, I've been saying recently, like in the Castilla video, we've been getting a lot of ships recently that just have a gray camo. So it's very nice to see a proper camo on the Carl. Kind of got this baby puke green going on, which I wasn't a huge fan of at first. But, you know, it's starting to grow on me after I've been playing the ship. For a couple of days now. But yes, it looks very good. Alright. And I believe you do get like the DeLorean 80s camo in one of the bundles in the armory if you're wondering about that. So, now like I said, this is essentially a German battlecruiser hull. I think it's actually the Ruprecht's hull, kind of, sort of, that's been modified a bit. Um, so you might be thinking, oh, it's got battlecruiser armor. Well, I'm happy to tell you, it don't. Come on, mouse, what is wrong with you? Okay. <laughs> But no, it does have proper battleship armor. 32mm bow, 35mm icebreaker bow. Uh, side plating is 275 above the water, 330 below the water, and then 255 right there. Right before it transitions to the torpedo protection down here, which is 32 millimeters, And then your upper strip is 150. You have a partial icebreaker stern, or the steering gear's armor, at 95mm. 32mm stern 32 millimeter stern deck, and then a 32 millimeter bow deck, 32 millimeter mid deck. The Citadel is pretty well protected. Once you strip strip away all the armor, it is below the water, and it is protected by both the torpedo protection and you've got, of course, the belt that drops down like that. So it's pretty well protected. It's below the water. You're probably really only going to be able to get through to it when she's perfectly flat, of course. Or she's turning hard over. 
And the turrets, if you are wondering, they have a face of 360 millimeters. Their angled roof is 150. The roof is 130. A side is 220. A roof side is 150. Back is 220. All right. So pretty well protected battleship. Although, of course, you know, this is going to get farmed by every light cruiser that can pin 32, which is what every light cruiser at tier 9 and well, really tier 8 and above strive to get their HE pins over. So yeah, that's going to get farmed, but pretty pr pretty tanky little ship so far. So getting to the stats now, 72,900 HP, about right for a tier 9 battleship, and a 20% torpedo damage reduction. Boy, it surely is a German one. Hey, actually, look, the Rupert's right here. Is it... Eh, yeah, kind of, kind of, sort of. looks like the Rupert hull, but like an earlier version of it. Um, does Rupert have an alpha hull now that I'm... Oh, God, I didn't mean to do that. Now that I'm seeing it, uh, can I view it in port game without... Nope, I can't. Okay. Well, yeah, again, it looks like a Rupert hull. It might be. It might be the a-hole for the Rupert. But anyway, okay. So, on to the guns now. Now, these are the same guns that you will find on the gear. And that's about where they end, though. The guns are the same, shells are different. But the reload time is 25 seconds. You do get 12 of these 305mm guns. They have a 180 time of 30 seconds, maximum dispersion of 251 meters, and a maximum range of 19.1 kilometers. Now, the shells, the Carl does have better HE shells than the gear. They don't have the anemic German HC. It's pretty good. 4,350 alpha damage. The Aguirre's alpha is like, what, what's 33? It's pretty low. Yeah, 3,600. That's uh, not great. Uh, but they do pin uh, 76 with the gear here. But with the Carl, who has misplaced, there she is. With the Carl, you do get 51 millimeters of pin and a 28% fire chance on top of a much better alpha rating. And they come out the tubes at 865 meters a second. The AP isn't as good as the Aguirre's AP. Aguirre's AP does have an alpha rating of 9600. The Carl's does have 8400, which is still pretty good. Don't get me wrong. But of course, it's not the god tier AP alpha that the Aguirre and the Germans get to enjoy. And those two come out the tubes at 865 meters a second. So you trade off a bit of your AP performance to get a bit more consistent HE performance. Which, in my mind, that's worth the trade. Especially since this is a battleship. Do keep that in mind. Secondaries, you have 6x2 120mm secondary guns. With a base reload time of 3 seconds. Maximum range base of 7 kilometers, 1700 maximum damage rating. And a 7% fire chance per shell. But they only pin 20mm of armor. Because, again, it's not the German HE shell. And they have an initial velocity of 850 meters a second. Now you have a ton of... Of these 150 millimeter guns 14 of them they have a 7.5 second reload time maximum range of seven kilometers 2200 maximum damage rating 13 percent fire chance but they only pin 25 millimeters of armor and those shells come out the tubes at 835 meters a second torpedoes is where it really starts to get interesting you get 16 of the 533 torps. These are the pan euro torps. I believe you essentially have a Holland per side. I believe Holland has two torpedo racks. Um, and yeah, they, they are the pan euro torps. They're fast at 86 knots, low damage at 10,700, and they're detected from 1.6 kilometers away. And they have a base range of 13.5 kilometers. That, that, that's pretty good. And there's something that the Carl has going for it that makes that extre extremely good. I was going to go with extremely and exceptionally, and my brain mixed them together. For the airstrike, you get two flights, one plane per flight with two depth charges per plane. So two depth charges per run reloads in, what, 30 seconds. There you go. And what's it going out to? 13 kilometers? 10 kilometers. Okay. A rating of 88. You have 16 of the single-mounted 40mm guns, and then the 120s are dual-purpose. And what's the range? The range is 6 kilometers. There you go. Removability, maximum speed of 30.5 knots, base with an 890 meter turning circle radius, and a rudder shift time of 16.4 seconds. Concealment is 13 kilometers base. Alright, for her box-o gimmicks, 
She has Hydro, not the German Hydro, 5 kilometer Hydro with a 100 second runtime. So again, not the German one, but definitely not bad. And then you get Repair Parties that repair 364 HP per second for 28 seconds, reloads in 80 seconds, 4 charges base. And then you have a standard damage con, 15 second runtime, 80 second cooldown time. And uh, that's it for the Carl. So, yeah. Pretty solid BB all around, but let's go ahead and throw my build onto her, shall we? Alrighty, starting with the Moduels. I went with Main Armaments Mod 1. This gives us a 20% buff to the chance of the main turrets and the torpedoes becoming incapacitated and a 20% buff to their reload time and a 50% buff to their survivability. Now, normally on a secondary build, I would take the secondary module here, here which does improve the secondary survivability, but the torpedoes, as you'll see later on, those, uh, those are pretty important. Then, of course, Damage Con Mod 1, because fires suck, and this reduces our chance of catching on fire by 5%, and reduces our chance of flooding by 3%. Then I went with Secondary Battery Mod 1, which gives us the 20% buff to the range of the secondaries, and a 20% buff to their dispersion. So, makes them shoot out further, makes them shoot out more better. Then Damage Con Mod 2 for a 15% a buff to the fire and flooding recovery times, because fires and flooding suck. Then I went with Concealment Mod 1, that gives a 10% buff to our concealment. And, well, the better your concealment, the better you are able to disengage from an engagement that you don't want to be engaged in. And, let's just sneak around a lot better, of course, and get the jump on the enemy team. Finally, Auxiliary Armaments Mod 2 gives a 20% buff to the secondary battery reload time, 15% buff to the AA damage, 15% buff to the damage from the flak, and if you do have DFAA, it gives you another 2 flak burst per salvo, but we don't have DFAA, so that does nothing! Then, of course, I do have Jersey Swirsky on here, as he's one of my few 21-point pan-euro commanders. And for the commander build, I went with Preventative Maintenance, which gives us a 30% buff to the chance of the modules becoming incapacitated. Mainly, well, mainly and only the turrets, torpedoes, steering gears, and engine. Any of those getting knocked out on a battleship suck, so yeah, don't want that to happen, and this helps that not happen. I then went with Grease the Gears, also known as MLG Turrets, thank you Euro. And this helps the turrets keep up with the ship, the Carl is a fast ship. And, I mean, outrunning your turrets is pretty annoying, so this helps the turrets keep up with the maneuvers. Then, of course, took long-range secondary battery shells, which gives us another 20% buff to the range of the secondary guns. And then, of course, follow that up with manual secondaries. This gives us a 10% buff to the reload time and a 10% buff to the dispersion, on top of, of course, a 50% a buff to the accuracy of the secondaries after they fire for 45 seconds, so it makes them shoot further, faster, and much more accurate after 45 seconds. Of course, it took Adrenaline Rush. Normally, Adrenaline Rush gives you a 2%, a, sorry, a 0.2% buff to your reload time for all your armaments, but I do have Jersey Squirsky, and he has an improved Adrenaline Rush skill that gives a 0.25% buff to our reload time per 1% of HP lost. Then I took Emergency Repair Expert, which gives us another charge of our Repair Party, and increases the runtime of Repair Party and Damage Con by 10%. So your Repair Party running for longer means you are regenning more health, and your Damage Con running for longer means during that duration, no fire or floods can get started on your ship while Damage Con is running. So the longer it runs, the better. Then finally, our final concealment expert skill, which gives us a 10% buff to our concealment. So now, that has got the secondaries out to 10.5 kilometers, with a 2.1 second reload time on the 120s, and a 5.1 second reload time on the 150s. Now, Sea Lord, you might be saying, you say that a 10 kilometer secondary range on tier 9 ships is atrocious and you shouldn't build into ships with such ranges like the Giuseppe Verdi. Well, well, dear friend, I have some good news for you. The Carl got something up her sleeve that uh, makes this a very viable strategy. Now, also, I didn't take IFHE, as some of you might have noticed, because... IFHE only gets the 150s over to 30 millimeters and the 120s over to, I think, 25 millimeters. So you don't cross that 32 millimeter threshold. And yes, the 30 millimeter threshold on the 150s is pretty good, but 
It's not 32. And keep in mind, this is a battleship with these 305mm guns as its main armament, meaning that your overmatch is quite low. If you're wondering what that means, if you have big enough guns, you can go through the bow and stern armor or any armor that is of a certain um, thickness compared to your gun ratio. There's a certain formula that you can um, do in order to figure it out, or you can uh, consult the spreadsheet, ironically, on the, wiki on the wiki page. But essentially, the 305s are so small, there's not a lot of armor thresholds that they can just punch their way through, especially at tier 9. So, you're going to need that HE for the fire chance and for the consistent pin damage. 51mm pin is certainly good enough to make it work on top of the 28% fire chance that you get out of the main guns with 12 shells. So, rather than take IFHE, and the trade-off for IFHE is that you cut your fire chance on all your shell types by 50%. So, that 28% fire chance on... The main battery guns would go down to 14, which is not good at all. And you're not getting, again, over that 32 millimeter threshold with your secondary. So that's why I didn't take it on my coral. So that's my reasoning, at least. All right. The torpedoes, they're still the same. I don't know why I clicked on that. Maneuverability, 32 knots with the speed flag. And the concealment is now down to 10.6 kilometers. That's that ace up the sleeve I was talking about. So essentially with the Carl now, when your secondaries fire, you're already in your detection range. Well, you're just getting into your detection range, I should, I should say. So, yeah, yeah. By the way, 2.6 kilometers on a tier 9 battleship. This is incomprehensible levels of stupid. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, one last check, too. The heal with the flag now heals 437 HP per second for 30.8 seconds with the flags as well. And the damage con now runs for 16.5 seconds with the flag. All right. We're going to go ahead and transition into some gameplay. And I'm going to meet you guys there with my voiceover review of the Carl. All right, guys. Voiceover Sea Lord here. And, well, the Carl. The Carl is definitely in the goofy boy category this ship is dumb it is really dumb it is so stupid you have a battleship that can stealth torp by a factor of almost four kilometers with the full concealment build keep in mind too these torpedoes are stock if you take the um was it the module or the commander skill or if you build into it in whatever way that you can you can't get the torpedoes going to, to 90 knots on a battleship that can stealth torp. That's pretty dumb. Alright? And the torpedoes are definitely a, uh, a source of damage income on this battleship. It's unlike the other battleships that, in a majority of cases, with the exception of, you know, the, the handful of battleships that have long torpedo ranges, so like the Schlieffen and the, was it the Iwami? Um, they're mostly just for an ace up the sleeve situation, like the Palmer. You know, you get into a brawl, you just throw the rack of torps into him, and now, hee hee ha ha, the enemy battleship is down 40k HP. But with the Carl here, it's just, yeah, I'm not detected, so I'm just gonna lob my torpedoes at him. I'm just a really friggin' big Holland. <laughs> so, it is definitely a goofy ship, and the torpedoes being an actual, again, consistent source of income... Is pretty funny in my opinion, at least. Who knows, I might become a decent torpedo DD player after playing enough of the Coral. So, how was the Coral? Well, uh, fun. It, it was a pretty fun ship. I'm surprised. I figured, you know, small caliber gun battleship with secondaries that can't pin 32 millimeters of armor at tier 9 with a range of 10.5 kilometers. No way, right? But way. Definitely way. And... Again, the 10.6 kilometer detection makes those 10.5 kilometers vi uh, secondaries viable because you have the stealth to, you know, just pop up 10 kilometers away from an enemy ship and they're just like, oh shoot, and now they're in your secondary range. And what I was doing was just absolutely making other battleship players cry by forcing them to use their damage con one way or the other. So what I was doing um, in detail is that I would either A, throw the HE from the main guns out at, at them, get a fire going on them, they pop their damage con, then I lob the torpedoes at them, 
which again you have 86 knot torpedoes base and you're probably going to pop up within 10 kilometers of the enemy ship with this build that I'm running so they're 10 kilometers away from you against 86 knot torps unless they're like a light cruiser or a DD they're probably eating a couple of your torpedoes in some way so then they get hit by the torpedoes now they're flooding and oh no you just use your damage con to put out my fires or just uh, swap it around like I believe you're going to see in the background footage here I think I hit uh, I think it was in a, in a Izumo with a couple of torps he's flooded or he had used damage con earlier to put out my fires and then oh Oh, shame you use that, buddy. And now you got your secondaries firing on him with decent fire chances, and you have a ton of secondary guns. You know, you got six 120s per side, and you got seven 150s per side, so you got 13 guns firing at them with good HE, uh, HE fire chances. And then you got your 12 305mm guns that you can, you know, use HE on top of that, and you're just going to be melting ships down with the Carl. And I was really playing it like, uh, kind of like, I guess, a secondary gear with usable torps. So I wasn't really playing like a battleship, playing more like a, a cruiser for most instances. But, you know, a as effective as it is to just, you know, go for full on damage over time, the AP is still very usable, very usable in this thing. It, it still slaps for sure. And while I might have the alpha of the German AP, it is still pretty darn formidable. Again, you still have 12 305 millimeter guns. And I found the accuracy to be not terrible. Because, again, you have 12 of them. If you have 12 guns, unless you just have absolutely dog crap, Sigma, and Dispersion, you're going to hit what you're aiming at, right? You know? And, again, you're not going to be landing all 12 shells on target. It ain't a Mecklenburg, all right? So, like, it, it ain't a Mecklenburg. Even if you do uh, go for a main battery build, it's not a Mecklenburg. It's not that accurate, of course. But it's definitely workable. I could definitely see a main battery build working on this. You know, just kind of giving up with the whole secondary side of thing, going full main battery and torpedo, I could see it working just fine as long as you have the concealment down to 10-6. But the way I was playing it, it worked well. I was having fun. Of course, there's going to be matches where you can't do the funny stuff, right? You can't sneak up on the enemy ships because either they have intelligent enough DDs to, you know, check their surroundings and spot and... Um, be um good pickets for their team but when you have dds that don't do that or if you murder the dds and then now you're the stealthiest thing on the flank literally out spotting some heavy cruisers with that 10.6 kilometer detect right uh then you can of course have some fun and if it wasn't for that concealment this ship would probably be an absolute pain right because that concealment lets you stealth torp it lets you you know, be in secondary range by the time you're spotted, right? So that is definitely something I would say you would, at the minimum, have to build into with the Carl. And, and yeah, sure, if you want to go for the IFHE route and you want to get consistent pins when you're top tier, but not when you're bottom tier, which is going to happen a lot, right? Because tier 9 sees tier 10 and super ship games all the time now, so you can't pin those guys as armor right with your secondaries even if you take ifhe so again join the dark side go for the full damage over time build like i'm going for and just burn the world down i guess an easy way to explain how i was playing the um carl is that i was playing it like a stealthy asian core with torps because i do the same thing in asian core you know i build into the secondaries keep he loaded on the 14 main battery guns and just burn the world down right but add torpedoes and stealthiness to that, and you're good to go. Oh, and good uh, speed as well. The Carl is is properly fast. You know, it's not the fastest boat at tier nine, but you're gonna be rocking and rolling well over 30 knots, right? So you can disengage quite easily thanks to your speed and your concealment. So that's a huge plus there as well. So yeah, I think it's it's well worth the the price for admission just for the sheer goofiness in and of itself if you ask me which i'm assuming you're here watching the video and you've you've stayed this long you've uh you know 
you're interested in what I have to say. So I do think it's worth it. I do think it's worth the price of admission. Um, of course, if you're into this type of thing, you know, if you're not into the secondary build, you're not into playing a bit goofy, being stealthy, waiting for your chance, and not just sitting in the back, and, you know, from 19.5 kilometers, spamming a cheat. Now, the 19.5 kilometers, of course, in some instances, that can be a, a, a hindrance, because as we all know, high tier games, kind of passive, a lot of times, it's sitting at 20 plus kilometers in, you can't really do much about that, especially if you're in a battleship. But again, with a 10.6 kilometer detection range, you can get a little bit closer. But again, too, you know, in those games, sometimes you fly too close to the sun and you can get burned pretty bad. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's got its limitations. It's a goofy ship. It's not something that you buy if you want an amazingly consistent uh, premium. I was able to get consistent performance out of it, but that was because, again, I've been playing Brawlers in a very passive meta for years now, so I can get it to work. And if, if you are like me, you do enjoy Brawling, and you've been playing, you know, your GK, Turpets, Palmer, uh, Niza now, whatever, in the current meta, as still a secondary Brawler, you can get this thing to work, right? But again, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's like the Cure Sarge, you can easily bring in 150k every game and make profit. So, well, I mean, you, you will be making profit of this thing unless you just blow up in the first two minutes because it's a tier 9 premium ship. So, overall, a numerical rating, I would give the Carl a 8 out of 10. It is a very fun premium ship, worth the price of admission, in my humble opinion. Uh, the pros, of course, being the 12 3-5mm guns with uh, good HE, great AP, the... I never found them to be very lacking in turret angles either way. Of course, you have just the mountain of secondaries on both sides of the ship as well. And with the build that I'm running, with the reload and the fire chance, they were having no problems starting fires. And do keep in mind, too, they can pin DD armor at, at this tier. You know, DD's at tier 9 plus 19 uh, millimeter platings, but 98% of them have that, you know, except for like the Kabarosk and the Kleber and the Marceau. So they can still pin DDs, and with the sheer number of them, they're going to make a DD's life horrible, right? So that's something I wanted to add in here. So yeah, great secondaries. Uh, again, couple that with this with the um, with the concealment. Uh, you do have the Holland torpedoes. Again, you can stealth fire torpedoes by a margin of three kilometers. That that's just downright goofy. You have the great speed of the ship as well along with good maneuverability and of course the amazing stealth the 10.6 kilometer detection with the full build is what makes this ship good if they nerf that then it, it's dead it's a dead ship if they nerf that in my humble opinion um repair party hydro and um damage con that's you know it's all standard there for the most part so it's not like they they gimped its Gant damage con or its hydro or its uh, heal in any way shape or form so that's all standard and great uh the cons being of course does only have a 19.5 kilometer range and in today's meta that is going to get yourself into some awkward situations and there's no spotter no fighter no way to um counter that the aa actually was fine in my experience ironically i did pop jersey squirsky's aa talent there in one game that i had with the ship um and of course it is of course a secondary close range ship and a, a meta that is very passive so that is th the downside to it so that's my review of the carl guys it's a fun goofy ship if you enjoy doing goofy things you're gonna like this goofy and silly boy of course if you do catch it on a cell or if you get it in a container you you know you've done a great thing there um would I go out and buy it right now? If you're just your average battleship player, probably not. But if you like what you've seen here and you enjoy the goofy ships like the Incomparable, you're going to like this, in my opinion, at least. So, guys, let me know what you guys think about the Carl in the comments down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday, wonderful rest of your weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.